Hello everyone, welcome back to another review. Today we're taking a look at the new Imperial Star Destroyer set. Right, as always, check out the box first. We have the Imperial Star Destroyer set 75394 with 1,555 pieces ages 10 plus. This set retailed for $160 and is part of the 25 years of Lego Star Wars, as you can tell with the nice chrome blue greebling as well as the exclusive minifigure at the bottom. It does include six minifigures with this set, and I guess us plebes are not fancy enough to receive the cool collapsible box with paper bags. It seems only land members got that. I don't know why, but I have just the standard boring box and I was really disappointed to be honest. All that aside, here we are with the Imperial Star Destroyer. I will say this is my very first version of this ship. I am happy to have it. I know I don't regret not getting the other ones. I personally will just say off the bat that I like the scale down size. So that is going to affect the way that I review this because I am fine with the scale down size. Bigger is not always better in my opinion with Lego Star Wars. And we'll get into it more, but first, let's go ahead and check out the minifigures because I think they're pretty good. All right, starting off this minifigure selection with the Stormtrooper. And this is not a new Stormtrooper. We have gotten her before with the dark head female. Looks good, though. I like the new leg printing that shows a little bit more detail, but I will forever hate these helmets. I don't like them. I hope Lego changes them, but I don't foresee that. But we get one Stormtrooper. And then we have the Imperial Navy Trooper, and I think that this one looks really good. I don't have an Imperial Navy Trooper, honestly, and I really like that the face detail has him kind of like in a grimace with an open mouth. I like that. He has a gun. There's a little bit of printing in the back, and he has a secondary face that just looks kind of grim, and this one seems to be maybe cringing a little bit. A good inclusion. Next, we have an Imperial Gunner which is pretty standard, except I believe this is, counts as a new minifigure because we've not seen an Imperial Gunner with this female head before, so she is new and exclusive currently to this set, but nothing super special. I mean, the Imperials are all kind of plain, to be honest, so this is just one of those. And then we have an Imperial crew member, lots of Imperial title characters here, in a gray jumpsuit and the newer style hat with a earpiece. Looks good. No printing on the back of the face, though, of course, because he's just wearing a hat. I definitely think this is something that is needed for this set, so you can never have too many. And then in all black here, we have Commander Pragi. I love when the Imperials have their little rank insignias because that just means more named characters. I personally don't remember this Commander from the movies, but I will just take Lego's word that it's there. And then he obviously has the newer style black cap. And overall looks really good, like I said great to have a named character in this set other than Darth Vader. And then we have Darth Vader, and I believe he's the same one as the Darth Vader mech with this newer face, but he has a starched cape, and I will never understand Lego's decision with bouncing back and forth between starch capes and spongy capes. I personally like spongy capes. I think that they're way better personally, but obviously we needed a Darth Vader. This is a more New Hope style Darth Vader based on the like cloth pieces on the sides of his belt. We've gotten other styles before, but definitely very A New Hope to me. And then the best figure in this set for sure with the 25 years plaque is the anniversary figure, Cal Kestis. And I'm really excited. He seems like a fake figure because I feel like I've just seen so many customs of him at this point because they never made a cow until now. So it just is funny to see Lego's take on him. I think his hair is really red, but you know, I guess it's that red in the game too. Uh, his pants are interesting. They're done in this kind of like gray chrome and they're, they're printed and he's got toe printing. I just don't really know how I feel about that, honestly. I mean, he has a gloved hand and people were complaining that he did not come with his poncho and sure, but I mean, I personally liked playing Cal without his poncho anyway, so it doesn't really bother me. He does have a secondary face there. And in some of my wildest Lego Star Wars dreams, I would love to get some variant outfits with Cal Kestis, but that's probably too much to ask for. I love this minifigure. I'm glad that I have the BD one so that they can kind of go together, even though I'll never display them together. Really happy to have him overall, though. He is worth getting this set to me. I mean, I needed it anyway, but definitely a figure to pick up. Alrighty, here we are with our big gray Dorito, and I am pretty pleased with it. This is nice and sturdy, and it comes with a handle, and those type of ships I absolutely love because they are just so fun to play with. Even if you don't play with Lego, they're fun to swing around still. So, as you can tell, we have the basis of the Star Destroyer here. We have some cannons on the side that move all together, which I really like. I think that is super clean. 
The fact, though, that there are these, like, little clip claw pieces bug me because if you mess them up, then they're not even, and I like being even. And they do have them on both sides, which is really nice. I do like the bridge. I think that, despite it obviously not holding any minifigures inside, looks really nice and is appropriately detailed. We have one sticker on the top. There aren't very many stickers in the ship. That is the only exterior sticker, obviously, because the ship kind of stands on its own without the need for them on the outside. So if you open these two doors in the front, we have our little carry handle, which is pretty easy to access. And I think overall the ship is held pretty levelly. It's based far enough back in the ship that the nose doesn't tilt it down because the back is heavier, but you know, obviously it's longer. And so I think that the balance of it is pretty nice and it really is heavy. It gets heavy after a while, but it is really cool to be able to carry it around this way. So I do appreciate that always, and I like that you can access it through those little doors. In the back, we have the engines, and I will say, since I've never owned an Imperial Star Destroyer before, I don't know if this is the normal way they do their engines, but I really, really like the look of them. They use this cog piece in a blue translucent, and that seems like a really rare mold uh, color for them. And so I really like the way it looks. It's super, super nice. I. I like it. So anyways, that is the exterior. Not a whole lot to talk about. You know, we have our wedge shape. And then if you remove this panel in the front, this is a super thick panel that contains the cannons on the top and has the doors for the handle. You are able to then open up the Star Destroyer. And I will say that I'm not a huge fan of the way that it opens up. And before we go into the interior, I would like to mention it. So it folds out flat like a pancake, and I just don't like it. It This sounds really weird, but it looks like an animal skin to me, the way that it is laid out. I don't know why my mind initially goes to that, but it does. I don't like all this flat space. I think that if it's laid out with the sides open, just like this, I think that that's playable enough. It looks like the Star Destroyer has edges. I just don't like it totally flat. I will also say that when you're going to put it together, it's got it's connected by these hinge pieces, and I thought that there would be a lot more Technic to this set than there is, so I was kind of surprised that the sides don't really have any Technic at all. They are just all flat plates, which is fine. It seems sturdy enough, but I don't like the slight slide that they do when you put everything up. I don't know. It's a little bit weird. It takes a little bit of fiddling to get right in my opinion. And this obviously has to come off, but it is a little bit awkward to get back on. It's not my favorite piece, but it does keep the ship together pretty well. And so, I don't know. That's just a slight complaint with me. Again, I've never had it as Star Destroyer, so I don't know if that is a standard thing or something they've just changed up, but I'm overall not a very big fan of it. I prefer it to be displayed with the sides. Now, inside we have a decent amount of interior. I like that for the most part, I mean, we're working with a small footprint here, and so I think what they did with it was just fine. We have some stickering on these long panels here, as well as some computers on each side. So if you have extra Imperials, you can add them in, and I really like that. Of course, we have a bridge, and it is super simple. I would have really liked to see some sort of hologram for Darth Vader to talk to, or something on the bridge, because it's just very basic. And it does look kind of funny when he Darth Vader stands on the bridge because he's sticking up out of the ship, but I mean, we can't have everything with this, I think. But I really like that you can sit troopers down in this like little deck area, and it's going to be kind of a tight squeeze, but you can really get everybody in there, and I, I just really appreciate that detail. Unfortunately, there's no direct connection from the deck to the back of the ship, but that's okay. Not a huge deal. You can see our handle again here, and we have a little desk here. I call this the manager's desk because managers don't do anything except it sit in desks. So of course we have one here. I think that that's kind of funny and a very interestingly printed tile there. I've not personally seen that one before. We have some boxes off in the corner with some like thermal detonators and stuff, some supplies I suppose, and then a couple of like little computers on each side that have some stickers. And I will note that all of these stickers have like a translucent base to them so they kind of blend in a little bit better, I guess. I do like the singular sticker that shows R2-D2 and C-3PO. That obviously puts us in the New Hope era, and I really like that idea. And then in the back, we have some like larger hologram screens with some Star Destroyer details, some TIE Fighter details, like the main information area back there looks really good. We have a couple of guns on the side, and then moving into the other side here. I initially was thinking as I had heard rumored that this was supposed to be some sort of Jedi holocron and I was like I do not remember a Jedi holocron in A New Hope and it turns out that this is a holograph board of 
basically the Star Destroyer with some rebel troopers and a rebel fleet. I guess you can spin it around and make it look like it's offline or something, but I really like the little crystal element to represent the Star Destroyer. I think that that is a really good little use there, and I like that it spins. Again, we get another one of those translucent kind of cog pieces for the base. I think it looks great. And then lastly, on this side here, we have one more sticker, as well as what looks like to be some sort of little medical bay. We have a shot, as well as some sort of drink. Maybe it's some sort of Bacta solution in a what looks like little refrigerator here. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be officially, but it reminds me of like a medical chamber. So I like that. And that's basically it. That's all we get. I think that overall, despite the weird paneling on the side, the way that it connects together, it has a great display presence. The play features on the inside, they're a fun detail, but I personally would never use them. I like that they're there. I always appreciate an interior, even if I don't use it. So I'm really glad that they did include that. I personally don't mind the scaled down size because it fits in my shelf. And I think that the longer ones, while they look good and can hold a little bit more detail, I think are probably more flimsy, but don't take my word on it because I don't have one. I personally just don't mind scaled down ships and that's just me. I am more of a playset person than like just an outward exterior person, which is why I don't have a lot of UCS sets because I like interiors. And so this is something that I definitely can get behind. So overall, I think this is a fantastic set. I'm so excited to have an Imperial Star Destroyer in my collection. I probably won't get another one. So this is, this is the one, and I think personally that it's really good. $160, though, if you already have an Imperial Star Destroyer, it's really probably not worth picking up. If you've never gotten one before and you're like me and like the scaled down size, definitely worth it. However, the big catch is going to be that Cal Kestis, which you can order separately from Bricklink. So if you don't want to buy the set, just order the figure. There's no need to buy this otherwise. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.